Hello world, this is Michael G. Nastis for WDEE-TV Headline News coming to you from our studios in Ypsilanti, Michigan. This is news for Thursday, September 11th, 2014. Our top story today comes from Heritage West. No byline was given. The Kroger Company has announced it will hire 20,000 permanent positions at its supermarkets, including roughly 1,800 in Michigan. The hiring announcement follows the Cincinnati-based company's plan to invest $110 million into the state. Kroger's growth trajectory creates more job opportunities for current and future employees, stated Katie Barkley, Kroger's Senior Vice President of Human Resources, in a press release. She also said, right now, in our stores across the country, we have openings for bright, hard-working associates who are passionate about making a difference for customers every day. Over the last six years, Kroger has created more than 40,000 new jobs, according to a company press release, and the company has hired more than 22,500 veterans since 2009. Those interested in applying should visit Kroger.com slash careers online. More on this story can be found in our local news feeds link on our website at wdeetv.com on the internet. Coming up, we have a story pending. It's on two residents who are rescued from an apartment fire in Ypsilanti. Stay tuned. At Morgan Taylor, buy two suits, get a third suit free. Morgan Taylor is located at 133 West Michigan Avenue in Ypsilanti. Clothing and accessories for men, women, and children at Morgan Taylor. Open Monday through Saturday, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. Call 734-221-0296. Ask about layaways and in-store financing. At Morgan Taylor, buy two suits, get a third suit free. We're back with more WDE.com TV headline news for this day, September 11th, 2014, and we have our top five stories for you today. Our second story involves two residents who were rescued from an Ypsilanti apartment fire this morning. This story was reported by the Ypsilanti Courier and Crystal Elliott. Those residents rescued from the apartment fire in Ypsilanti was during a fire which broke out early this morning. One of the two trapped, a woman, was transported to the University of Michigan Hospital burn unit for treatment for smoke inhalation in serious condition. The Ypsilanti Fire Department arrived on the scene at about 12.45 a.m., Thursday morning. The building at 209 Pearl Street contains several apartment buildings on the second and third floors and a barber shop on the first floor. Ypsilanti Fire Captain Dan Kane said that when the fire crew arrived on the scene, one man was hanging out of a window trapped by the fire. While they were in the process of rescuing the resident via ground ladder, Kane said they received another call from dispatch about the woman who was trapped. Kane said, we went over there on the opposite side of the building to attempt to rescue her. At some point while we were searching for her apartment, she made her way out onto the hallway where she collapsed and was passed out. Another resident who was not trapped also sustained injuries while he made his way out of the building. Kane said that the cause of the fire is still under investigation and that the 16-unit building sustained extensive damage. Quote, there was extensive damage. We don't have a dollar amount, Kane concluded. It doesn't look like much from the outside, but it's really bad on the inside. Mutual aid assistance was provided by Superior Township, Pittsfield Township, Ypsilanti Township, and the City of Ann Arbor Fire Departments. More on this story can be found on our local news feeds link on our website. That's wdtv.com. Coming up next, our third top headline story, Manchester area farmers are finding ways to reduce waste runoff.
This is WDETV Headline News Online, sharing Michigan with the world. And our next story comes from the Manchester Enterprise, reported by Nathaniel Siddall. Farmers in the river raisin watershed are finding ways to reduce the runoff that is contributing to water quality problems in Lake Erie. The problem gained national attention earlier this summer when drinking water in Toledo was contaminated by an algal bloom. Local farmers were recently invited to a cruise on Lake Erie sponsored by a coalition of agencies to see the algae problem firsthand and to learn about practices and programs to reduce runoff. Charlie Steffens owns 80 acres south of Manchester, which he is restoring as a native habitat and wetlands area. He went on the cruise and said it was a chance to meet farmers who are interested in farming in a way that promotes conservation. Quote, farmers are showing more and more interest in programs that they can get in on, he said. The River Raisin is a major tributary to western Lake Erie along with the Maumee River in Ohio. In the upper reaches of the watershed around Manchester, the Raisin water quality is high. But as the river winds 150 miles down to Monroe, where it empties into the lake, it does accumulate runoffs from surrounding agricultural land. Nutrients from farm fertilizers feed cyanobacteria into the lake, which leads to algal blooms. Reuters said improvements to sewage treatment plants had led to 30 years of improvement in the health of Lake Erie, but large algal blooms have started to reappear with the biggest one on record occurring in 2011. More on this story can be found on our local news feeds link on our website at wdeetv.com online. Coming up, our fourth story involves a solar storm heading for the Earth. Morgan Taylor, buy two suits, get a third suit free. Morgan Taylor is located at 133 West Michigan Avenue in Ypsilanti. Clothing and accessories for men, women, and children at Morgan Taylor. Open Monday through Saturday, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. Call 734-221-0296. Ask about layaways and in-store financing. At Morgan Taylor, buy two suits, get a third suit free. Back with our WDEE TV headline news and our next story reporting here in Ypsilanti, Michigan. By the way, I'm Michael G. Nastas, does come from the USA Today. It's reported by Doyle Rice. A strong solar flare that launched off the sun Wednesday afternoon could cause some fluctuations in Earth's power and grid and slight disturbances in satellites and radio transmissions this weekend, Friday and Saturday. Major disruptions are not expected even though the flare was classified as an X-class flare, which is at the high end of the solar flare scale. Wednesday's flare followed a weaker flare late Monday. Quote, we expect geomagnetic storm levels in the G2 or moderate and G3 strong range, said NOAA space weather forecaster Bill Murtaugh. G2 to G4 geomagnetic storms can cause some problems for the power grid, but are typically very manageable, Murtaugh said in an email Thursday morning. He also continued, we may also see some anomalies with satellites, so satellite operators around the world have been notified, and problems with the accuracy of GPS, for example, have been observed with this level of storming. Forecasters with NOAA Space Weather Prediction Center said the flare caused impacts to high-frequency radio communications on Earth on Wednesday afternoon. Intense flares like the one 
that erupted Wednesday produced coronal mass ejections, or CMEs. A coronal mass ejection contains billions of tons of energetic hydrogen and helium ions, as well as protons and electrons ejected from the sun's surface. Now, the worst of the energy particles streaming from the sun likely will miss Earth this time, but any additional eruptions in the next few days will likely produce more disturbances in our geomagnetic field, Murtaugh added. One nice side effect of the solar storm is an expansion of the photogenic aurora borealis or northern lights across Canada and the northern United States. People in northern New England, the northern plains, far northern, and the Pacific Northwest should have the best views of the aurora. The northern lights appear when atoms in the Earth's high-altitude atmosphere collide with energetic charged particles from the sun. They usually appear as shimmering green waves of light in the nighttime sky in polar latitudes. Much more rarely, they can be red and even blue. It's a colorful story. More on this can be found on our local news feed on our website. Go to the link, wdeetv.com online. Coming up next, the Coast Guard says we can't adequately respond to Great Lakes heavy oil spills. Stay tuned. Welcome back to WDEE TV Headline News Online. My name is Michael G. Nastis reporting, and our next and final of our top five stories comes from the Detroit Free Press staff writer Keith Matheny. The U.S. Coast Guard and other responders are not adequately equipped or prepared for a heavy oil spill on the Great Lakes, according to a Coast Guard commander who is pushing for action. A major oil spill could spell economic disaster for the states in the Great Lakes region, severely damaging the multi-billion dollar fishing and recreational boating industries and killing off wildlife. Rear Admiral Fred Midget, Commander of the Coast Guard's District 9, which includes the Great Lakes, said everyone involved in spill response on the Great Lakes is moving with a sense of urgency to come up with a plan to address a major spill. But they haven't yet found a way to go forward with it yet. Quote, when you get environmental groups, technical experts, oil spill recovery groups, and regulators together, that's how you find what's the best way ahead, Midget said. Tuesday at an international forum on heavy oils at the Detroit Wayne County Port Authority, attended by a cooperative of oil and chemical spill professionals, Midget said that he was particularly concerned that response plans and organizations are not capable of responding to heavy oil spills, particularly in open water scenarios. In an August 20th memo to the Coast Guard's Deputy Commandment for Operations. More on this story can be found on our local news feeds link on our website at WDEETV.com. Coming up next, WDEETV Sports News for this September 11th. At Morgan Taylor, buy two suits, get a third suit free. Morgan Taylor is located at 133 West Michigan Avenue in Ypsilanti. Clothing and accessories for men, women, and children at Morgan Taylor. Open Monday through Saturday, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. Call 734-221-0296. Ask about layaways and in-store financing. At Morgan Taylor, buy two suits, get a third suit free. 
Wrapping up our news for this day, Thursday, September 11th, 2014, we have WDE Headline Sports. Matt Shoemaker won his 15th game last night in Texas against the Rangers. His unprecedented rookie season might not be good enough for the Rookie of the Year award, but definitely puts him in the Cy Young conversation. Since the injury to fellow LA Angels pitcher Garrett Richards, the 27-year-old undrafted EMU alum has carried the team to first place in the American League West with a whopping nine-game lead over the heavily favored preseason pick, the second-place Oakland Athletics. We have not talked much about Zach Putnam. He's the former University of Michigan pitcher who won his fifth game in his rookie season for the fourth place Chicago White Sox. Pitching primarily out of the bullpen, Putnam has stepped in to do a good job no matter his role, long or short relief, and occasionally as the closer. Over 45 games pitched, he has a sparkling 2.10 earned run average. He's saved four games with 14 holds, and his strikeout-to-walk ratio is pretty good, 41 to 19. Detroit Pistons center Greg Monroe certainly has had his ups and downs this offseason. He signed a one-year qualifying offer last week for nearly $5.5 million after rejecting a long-term $50 million deal. The restricted free agent can go on the open market next year. There was much talk online about the Pistons doing a sign-and-trade deal for Monroe with several teams interested. He has averaged 14 points and 9 rebounds in his career. Monroe pled guilty to a DUI arrest in Huntington Woods February 13th. Police released video footage of the stop and arrest yesterday which stemmed from a defective headlight. Monroe failed the field sobriety test. The NBA suspended him for two games without pay and will serve that suspension at the beginning of the new season. And that's WDETV.com headline news for Thursday, September 11th, 2014. I'm Michael G. Nastis reporting. See you tomorrow. So long, everybody.